I'd like to say hello to everyone once again. Welcome to Restoration Christian Fellowship Church Bible Study, uh, November 13th, 2024. I bring you greetings on behalf of our senior pastor, Imogene Ingram, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church family. We thank you for joining our class on tonight. Uh, we continue in our study of, uh, uh, wow, I just went brain dead, and it's too early. It's the start of the class on tonight. Uh, <laughs> We in John chapter one, um, we've been studying about Jesus as the light and how John was the forerunner for Jesus. And tonight we're going to be talking about Jesus as the light of men uh, found in your packet on page 23 is where we're going to start at on tonight. Uh, page 23, Jesus is the Jesus, the light of men is where we're going to start at on tonight. Um, it's been a great class so far, and I welcome all those that have been joining us over um, the weeks with this uh, new series that we've been in. Of the study of the book of St. John. I'm going to open up in prayer and then we're going to go ahead and jump into the class one tonight. Um, I did have a, a scripture, um, Psalms 118 and 24. Uh, we all know this scripture. Uh, many of us quote it before we start a service. And the last two days, I cannot get this song out of my spirit. Uh, we used to sing it at, as the church and I don't know, the pastor might remember it. I'm sure Ricky and maybe somebody else. But we used to sing the, scrim the scripture of Psalms 118 and 24. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Amen. Um, and I've just been singing it and singing it and singing it the old school way. And then I heard it yesterday with Fred Hammond. And Fred Hammond added a twist to it. So I just want to start with the words of that song on today before I enter into prayer to just encourage all of our hearts. Uh, the song says, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, the Lord has made, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day the Lord has made. And then Fred Hammond added this part, which I love. It says, as I look back over my life, over the years that I made it through, can't imagine where I'd be now if it wasn't for you, if, if it wasn't for you. Why your favor rests upon me, I could never explain. Your favor is just what I needed. Why your favor rests upon me, I could never explain. Your favor is just what I needed. Why your favor rests upon me, I could never explain. Your favor is just what I needed. But I'm so glad that I can say I will rejoice because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. So I just wanted to start that way on today. I know it's a way that song goes, a little uh, melody and a rhythm to it. Um, I'm not going to try to sing it, but I spent in my head the last three days and I just wanted to start that way. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it, and we shall be glad. Amen. Uh, let us open up. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, this, this class on tonight. I first ask for forgiveness for anything I may have said or done outside of your will. I pray, oh God, that you would take over this class on tonight, oh God. God, I pray in Jesus' name, oh God, uh, and thank you for forgiving us and placing us in right standing with our Father God. God, we welcome your spirit into this class on today. We pray, oh God, that you will word my mouth. Um, as I decrease, that you may increase word the mouths of those who will give input on tonight. Uh, we just thank you for having your way with our Bible study on tonight, God. We take authority over the airways on tonight, oh God. We take authority over any bad health, any bad um, uh, uh, vibes, oh God. Anything that is not like you on tonight, oh God. We take authority over it, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus. You've given us the power to take authority over that. God, we take authority over our day. We speak peace to, to our day. We speak happiness. We speak joy, oh God. We speak prosperity to our day. We just thank you, oh God, for putting us in a place of authority, oh God, where we can put the devil under our feet and we can walk over him, trample over him, oh God, and let him know his place in our lives. And that is not a place at all. So we thank you, God, for giving us that authority in your, in your son's name, Jesus' name. You tell us that we can ask, oh God, ask what we will, Oh God, and oh God, and you will answer us. So we thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for our church, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church, God. God, we thank you for our pastor, Imogene Ingram. Oh God, we thank you for the anointing that is on her life to lead us as our pastor. 
God, we thank you for that awesome words he spoke to us on this past Sunday. Are we on our assignment, oh God? I pray, oh God, that we all would um, just uh, gravitate to what was being spoken to us, oh God, that we will uh, take that word and listen to that word and apply it to our lives, oh God. Are we on our assignment? for the Lord, God. We thank you for that. And we just thank you for covering her with your blood. We thank you for, oh God, giving her the strength and peace and encouragement to lead us as our pastor in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the uh, unity, God, of our church. We pray for the elders, the ministers, oh God, the deacons, the lay people, oh God, our family and friends of restoration as well on tonight. We just thank you, oh God, for just um, being a, a, a great, oh God, uh, um, deliverer and a, 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 a a breaker of um a breaker of chains. So we just thank you on tonight for that. And we just thank you for Restoration Christian Fellowship Church and the vision for this part of the vineyard. We uh, pray for our nation. Oh God, as we uh, have a selected a new president, God, God, we pray for the transition to that new president. Oh God, will go smoothly. We pray for our current president. We pray for uh, the president elect. Oh God, as well on tonight, God. And God, we pray for our nation that we will uh, get, uh, come into unity, oh God, that we won't be so uh, um, uh, broken apart, oh God, both in the churches and in our world, oh God. Oh God, it's a shame how many pastors and um, leaders around the world are fighting, oh God, um, right now, oh God. So we just pray for unity, we pray for love to prevail. And we pray for the love of Christ, oh God, to spread like never before throughout our churches. We also pray for the pastors, oh God, that are fighting Oh, God, to keep their church doors open. We lift them up to you in the name of Jesus Christ on tonight, God. We pray that they will not give up the fight, that they will continue, oh, God, fighting for you, oh, God. And I just pray the finances, oh, God, the people, oh, God, um, all the resources necessary to keep those doors of those churches open that are uh, uh, contemplating closing. We pray for them right now, and we just speak uh, your will over their lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we just thank you on tonight. We pray for our young people they, that they will continue, oh, God, to understand that they have a freedom. They have a, a, a life in you, oh, God, that their life is not part of this world, that you hold them out of this world. You have a marvelous plan for their lives. Lord, send them to the places necessary, oh, God, and surround them with the people necessary that will speak destiny into their lives, oh, God. So we call our young people out of darkness, and we speak life over our young people, oh God, all those, oh God, that are fighting mental conditions, oh God, drug addiction, alcohol, oh God, those that have been involved in sex sex trafficking, oh God, and, and, and wayward thinking, and all those different things, oh God, we pray for our young people that you will call them out, and that you will send someone to lead them to you, and to pull them out of that situation, so we speak your blood over their lives right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. We also, God, on tonight, pray, oh God, for um that peace of Jerusalem. We lift up that nation to you, oh God, that you will continue, oh God, to cover them with your uh with your with your blood. Oh God, that you will continue to watch over them, oh God, um, as the different nations rise up against them. How they able to defend themselves against, oh God, all those larger nations that are coming against them. We know that you're still watching over them. So we thank you for watching over Jerusalem, watching over Ukraine, oh God. Uh, we also pray for Haiti, we pray for Nigeria, oh God, we pray for all those nations that are fighting, oh God, for their very existence in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, once again, we just thank you for all those that are sick and shut in. Oh God, we pray for your healing over them. We pray, oh God, that you would just send your healing power to all those that are shut in, all those that are sick, all the caregivers that are uh, taking care of those that are sick. We pray for them also in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we just thank you on tonight once again for who you are. And God, we pray for excitement. Oh God, we pray for joy. We pray, oh God, that uh, our spirits will be lifted on tonight and that you will get all the glory and all the honor out of our class on tonight. We celebrate you and we welcome your presence into this class on tonight. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, I thank all those who have joined our class on tonight. We're on page 23, excuse me, in your packet. Um, and uh, that's uh, Jesus, um, the light of men, Jesus, the light of men. Um, tonight, we're going to be covering verses. Uh, well, we're only going to do one verse on tonight. That's verse 9. Uh, but we will read verses 9 through 13. That's the next section that we're going to be dealing with. And that's going to be dealing with Jesus, the light of men. We have been talking about John the Baptist the last few weeks, how he was a forerunner for Jesus Christ and how he came 
and how he was on an assignment, amen, from the Lord, amen, from birth, amen. Um, and he uh, recognized that assignment, knew his assignment, fulfilled that assignment, and did it all the way to the to his grave, to the death, amen. Uh, what an awesome testimony that John the Baptist had, amen. Uh, he was the forerunner for Jesus Christ, and he pointed everyone to the, to Jesus who was coming after him, and he took no credit, as we found out last week, Amen. He didn't um, uh, he didn't preach. Amen. He didn't build any synagogues. He didn't set up no churches. He didn't build any organizations. He just taught the word of God and led people to repentance and baptized them and pointed them to Jesus Christ. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about that person who he was uh, re referring to. Uh, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, he is the light of men. Uh, where we're we going to be talking about tonight. I'm going to read John chapter 1, verse 9 through 13 for your hearing. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And we read starting at verse 9 of John chapter 1. Verse uh, 9 says, The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the, into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn glory, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Amen. And the verse we zero, zero in on, on zero in on tonight is uh, chapter verse nine. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Uh, John 1 and 9, this is not in your notes. Uh, John 1 and 9 states that the true uh, light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Amen. This verse, amen, identifies Jesus as that true light. Amen. Emphasizing his divine role and bringing spiritual illumination and understanding to all humanity. It highlights the inclusive nature of his mission as the light is intended for everyone, offering guidance, offering hope, and the opportunity for salvation. This verse foreshadows, amen, the arrival of Jesus into the world and the transformative impact, glory to God, of his presence on the world uh, for the uh, future to come. Amen. So that's where we are tonight, talking about uh, John, the forerunner uh, for this person that was coming, that was the light, and that light was Jesus Christ. And now we're going to talk about this light on tonight. Uh, once again, we are on page 32 in your packet. We'll start there, um, and we'll go ahead and uh, get into the lesson. Point C, uh, Jesus, the light of men, the second witness of John, um, the apostle, uh, verse chapter 1, verses 9 through 13, uh, as an introduction uh, the world is in desperate straits. Uh, it is full of darkness and darkness of sin and despair, of sickness and death, of corruption and hell. The darkness looms over the whole world. Uh, this is the problem dealt with in this in the present in this present pass, passage. There is hope in Jesus Christ, for Christ is the true light, and light uh, dispels darkness. Amen. There is hope in Jesus Christ. For Christ is the true light, glory to God, and light that dispels darkness. Verse 9, is we're going to talk about Christ was the light tonight. Uh, next week, we'll be getting into Christ was tragically rejected by the world. And the following week, we'll be getting into Christ was wonderfully received by some. Amen. Uh, point one on tonight, uh, Jesus Christ's light and his mission. Uh, Christ was the true light. Other men may claim to be lights. Um, they claim that they can lead men to truth. Amen. Some may claim they can reveal God to men. We know that as false prophets and uh, people that are false. Uh, uh, some may claim that they can show the nature, meaning, and destiny of the future and other things. Uh, some may claim that they can guide a man out of darkness of sin, shame, doubt, despair. In the fear of death and hell, some may claim that they can even do away with and do away and eliminate the darkness entirely. Amen. However, such men are false lights. 
Their claims are only ideas and their minds fictitious ideas and counterfeit claims. Amen. Their thoughts and position are defective, frail, and uncertain, just as imperfect as any other man-made position dealing with the truth. We're going to look at two glorious truths. Uh, the first truth, amen, we um, we actually did the truth, uh, the deeper study in another um, earlier in the lesson, and that, and that deeper truth covered, amen, the two, uh, the two words of truth. Uh, truth and real are taken from two Greek words very much alike, uh, but each has a different shade or meaning in this deeper study one. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys remember this. The word was A-L-E-T-H-E-S, elite, elitis, uh, A-L-E-T-H-E-S means true, the opposite of false, amen. And then the other word we learned earlier was uh, A-L-E-T-H-I-N-O-S, A-L-E-T-H-I-N-O-S means the true, the genuine, the real, it is the opposite of the unreal, the fictitious, and the counterfeit, the imaginary. It is also the opposite of the imperfect, defective, frail, and uncertain. Jesus Christ, once again, Jesus Christ is seen as the true, the real, the genuine life, which has come, amen, to give light to every man, amen. That's coming from Deeper Study 1. Um, what does this mean? It means that Jesus Christ was what other men are not. Amen. Other men claim to be the light of men, but their thoughts are only false imaginations. Amen. Christ alone was the true light. Christ is to man what light is to man. Amen. And Christ did for man what light does for man. And what does amen, the light do for man? And what does Christ do for us? Light is clear and pure. It is clean and good. So is Christ. Ephesians 5 and 8 says, For ye were sometimes, amen, darkness, but now, glory to God, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Amen. For ye were sometimes darkness. Amen. At some point we were in darkness, but now, are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of the light. Say, man. So light is a cl is clear and pure. It is clean and good. So is Christ. Light penetrates. Amen. It cuts through and eliminates darkness. So does Christ. Glory to God. Light penetrates. It cuts through the cuts through and eliminates darkness. So does Christ. Light enlightens. It enlarges one's vision and knowledge. So does Christ. Light, glory to God, reveals. It opens up, amen, the truth of, of, of an area, a whole new world in life. It clears up the way to the truth in life. So does Christ. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Glory to God. Also, like guides, it keeps one from groping and grasping about in the dark, trying to find one's way. And I had to laugh when I was studying this these last few weeks. Um, if you ever walk in a dark room where you can't see, uh, and I, I think that's uh, the groping and grasping about. I know myself, if I'm ever in a room and the, and the lights are, you know, off and I can't really see, I know that it's a dresser here. So you're trying to find and you're looking for the dresser and you're looking around. Amen. That's what I, I took from this. Amen. Light guides. It keeps one from groping and grasping about in the dark, trying to find. Amen. One's way. It directs the way to, to go. Leads along the right path. So does Christ. Glory to God. John 12 and 36 says this, while ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. And John 12, 46 says, I am come, amen, a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide 
in darkness, man. Ain't that something to shout right there? Amen. Amen. Jesus says, I am come a light. He came as a light into the world that whosoever believeth on him should not abide in darkness any longer. Glory to God. So last point on this one. Oh, it's a couple more. Light exposes and strips away darkness. So does Christ. John 3, 19 and 20 says, uh, and this is the com condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Amen. So light here exposes and strips away darkness. So does Christ. Amen. And we know, uh, um, um, I'm not sure why it always happened this way, but whenever it's dark or dark or night, um, that's when most of your violence and most of your evil happens. Amen. Uh, thinking that they can get away from with it or it, it's not going to, you know, get caught or whatever. But God in his word here is telling us, amen, for everyone that doeth evil hateth that light because neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So light exposes evil. It exposes that darkness. Amen. And we don't want to be exposed, amen. We want to let that light come and shine into and shine through us. That whatever place we go to that's dark, we take Jesus with us, and that light illuminates that room and it dispels that darkness. Amen. And that's what he wants to do in our hearts. Amen. He wants to come, amen, to cleanse us and clean us, amen, and to get us and remove us out of that darkness. So light exposes and it strips away darkness. So does our Savior Christ. Light also, <clears throat> excuse me, routes out chaos. Uh, so does Christ. Amen. Light routes, uh, routes, uh, routes um, the chaos. Amen. So does Christ. And that's found in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And we uh, are familiar with this scripture, many of us. Uh, John 2, uh, Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Glory to God. Light discriminates between the right way and the wrong way. So does Christ. Amen. Um, Ephesians, um, I'm going to read um, all three verses, uh, 8 through 10. Amen. Or two verses instead of just Ephesians 5, 10, and then 5, 8 through 10. I'm going to read 8 through 10. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, light warns, glory, light warns of dangers that lie ahead in one's path. So does Christ. Uh, if you ever drove your car at night, uh, 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 the lights, amen, will give you what's ahead of you so you can uh, drive accordingly to the road and uh, the conditions of the road and what uh, cars may be in front of you. The light helps, amen, guide you. So does Christ, amen. Light warns. It lets us know the dangers, amen, that lie ahead of us on our path. So does Christ. And lastly, light protects. It keeps one from tripping stumbling, falling, and injuring oneself, and losing one's life, so does Christ. Amen. So I'm going to pause right there before we go into the mission of Christ and just ask, is there any thoughts or comments on uh, the lesson so far, what you got out of the first part of Jesus being the light, amen, and how those different areas affect our life, um, and we go on from there. So any thoughts before we go on to the next point? Yes, Sister Ricky. Um, I was thinking in some of the other verses, uh, I think it was John 12, had the same kind of words that uh, John 8 and 12 has. And Jesus spake unto them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And when you opened up with your um, 
the song like by Fred Hammond, the song that was in my heart was Jesus, the light of the world. We used to sing that when we were younger. And so that took me to that scripture, how he is the light of the world. And then mm. um, in the line beneath that, where it says light exposes and strips away darkness. And I was thinking of those as being action. Like it, it's not just there. Like when you expose something, it takes a, a movement, a, 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 an uncovering, and then also strips away. It's not like um, falling off or something. It, it just seemed more powerful than that, that it snatched, it strips away the darkness. Like mm. it was more in the action. So I was thinking about how uh, the Bible says that some we have to snatch out of the fire. And yeah. the action that that takes is like the action of strips away. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but no, you are. That's you are. You're fine. Where it was in my mind, it wasn't like a casual thing. That it just popped out at me, like exposes and strips. Like it's very necessary, yeah. not just a casual action. Right. Right. And I, I like that because it 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 not only exposes, but as you said, it strips away. Amen. That that darkness. Amen. It has a twofold uh, process there. Amen. It exposes and strips it away. Amen. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Sister Ricky. Anyone else have any thoughts before I move on? Yes, uh, Deacon Kevin. The very last, um, the light protects and keeps one from tripping, stumbling, falling, and injuring oneself and losing one's life. So did Christ. And as Thinking about when I was in um, uh, Massanutten, uh, Virginia, um, I went to one of those uh, Virginia caverns in the caves. And uh, I think it's uh, Luray Cavern or either Shenandoah Cavern. But anyway, I remember the first time I was down there and you're down about a thousand feet underground and, and the guys, you know, he's showing you all the stalactites and everything. But one of the things um, that he told us was that um, further down, there's cliffs down in the in the caves, and the animals would would walk in to the cave, and they would follow the leader. There would be one leader of this pack, and they would follow down in the caves, but it was completely dark. And when I say it's dark down there, it's it's yeah. really dark. Uh, but the one thing that he mentioned is the cliffs that's inside the caves. They're following the leader, but the leader, because he can't see uh, correctly, falls down the cliffs. And then every animal behind it just keeps moving, and they're following the leader, and they all fall down in the cliff and, and die. And it always makes me think, about uh, the word of God and he is the light and you follow his path um, and and the animals are just showing you if you're following the wrong leader um, <laughs> you follow the wrong leader and he's following and you follow him in the dark he's leading you onto the edge of a cliff and mm -hmm. you fall because he fall yeah. and I always remember overseer he said you know don't go by uh, so the senior pastor, don't go by what I say. Uh, read the word for yourself and, and make sure um, I'm giving you the right word. Just don't go by what I say. Actually do your homework. Take the notes yeah. and read the word for yourself. But that last one had me thinking about uh, when I was down in the, Virgi in, in the Virginia caverns and what happens when you follow the wrong leader in the darkness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's why this lesson, thank you, Deacon Kevin, is uh, uh, talking about how Jesus is that true light. Amen. He's not false. Amen. He's not claiming to be something that he's not. Amen. He is that light. And he is that light that's going to guide us uh, to our, um, guide us home to our Father God and also guide us as we live down here on this earth. So it's such a blessing. Amen. Um, and I, that's as soon as you, as you were talking, my first thought was, uh, and I'm glad you brought it up, was, Make sure we're following the right leaders, amen, because we can follow the wrong leaders, amen, and end up off the cliff, amen. Um, they lead you to destruction, 
but our Jesus, amen, the light of the world is leading us to eternal life and to pleasures forevermore. Amen. Uh, thank you, Deacon Kevin and, and Sister Ricky. Now, uh, Pastor has her hand up. Can you hear me? Uh, barely. Mm -hmm. Try and get can you more. Hear me? Can, can you hear, hear you me? now? I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What I was uh, thinking about that verse that says that in verse nine that you open up with, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And when I read that, when you read that, I thought about. Uh, I was watching TV in no, Daystar last night, and they were talking about the soul of man, and and um, and talking about babies in the womb, and and they literally showed uh, a camera that at the point of conception said there's a circle of light that comes around the whole womb, and they were you know and you know. Liken that to the light of God, the light of Christ Jesus. that comes into the womb at the point of conception. Mm. And because I was just reading where it says, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And they that light is really reflected at conception. They literally showed it, you know. Yes. Uh, and it just took too many people over because they had never seen it before. And it was documented, wow. you know, that light. And and it circles the you know the whole uterus, <laughs> the womb, yes. whatever at the time of conception. So mm. they just know that's a living soul because yes. it's a soul. It's a it's a yeah. It's a person that has been born that has a soul that will live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yes. That was wow. Really that is. I'm glad you shared that because that's that's. I'm thinking that as you were sharing that, I'm thinking about how uh, uh, John the Baptist, the forerunner, amen, um, that, you know, his assignment and his, 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 what God called him to do in the womb, amen, he was able to be filled with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit where he leaped in his, mother room, in his mother's womb, amen. So that lets us know, amen, that, that God is in the womb and it, with that baby or that child, as you stated. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Pastor. That's, that's a very uh, good point there. Yes. Uh, anyone else before I move on? Wow. Uh, yes, Deacon. Um, I don't know if you want to see it or not, but I do. I just picked, uh, pulled up the video that actually oh, shows yeah. the moment of conception where you see the light mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Sure. I remember to share the uh, volume and all that when you share the screen. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. Very special microscope. It's saying egg and showing the moment of conception. The moment the sperm enters the egg, there is mm. now documented source of light. It enters the egg, the moment of conception, the very moment that the sperm enters the egg, there is a flash of light, and the <laughs> light has entered wow. the world. Wow. Jesus <laughs> is placed in the womb of Mary, the Virgin. God himself gave his son. And the light came into the world. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Deacon Kevin. Hey, Amen. We got to get a little hand praise. And that shows this marvelous uh, power right there that we serve the true and the living God. Amen. Where life, amen, comes into us. Amen. That conception, that light, amen, that we're talking about tonight. And that light, amen, is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing, Pastor. And thank you, Kevin, amen, for being able to use technology quickly uh, to find that for us. Amen. Thank you. Uh, that really added uh, emphasis on what we have studied so far. Thank you. Um, anyone else before we uh, continue on? Amen. If not, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next portion. Amen. B, 
Amen. Um, the mission of Christ is to give light to men. Note, amen, that he gives light to every man. Wow. Christ gives light to men through natural revelation, the creation and order of the universe. Amen. Can I have a reader for those uh, group of scriptures there? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show of his handiwork, Psalms 19 and 1. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory, Psalms mm -hmm. 97 and 6. For the invisible things of, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, Romans 1 and 20. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law, written in their hearts, their thoughts, the thoughts, the meaning while accusing or, or else excusing one another, Romans 2, 14 through 15. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness Acts 14 and 17. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Kevin. So we see here, amen, how Christ uh, gives light to men through natural revelation, through creation, and order of the universe. Amen. So there is no excuse, amen, because the, starting off with the very first verse that on tonight, Psalms 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Glory to God. In 97 and 6, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Amen. So we see here, amen, through natural revelation, through creation and order of the universe. Amen. We can see, amen, the mission of Christ, amen, is to give light to men and note that he gives light to every man. How does he do this? He does that, amen, through natural revelation, through creation in the order of the universe. Amen. Next point, Christ gives light to men by giving good gifts to men. Every good and perfect gift which man receives is said to come from the Father of lights. Amen. Uh, James 1 and 17 says, for um, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. But there is much more light given to men since Christ has come into the world. One, point one, the light, amen, there is the light of Christ himself. He is the Savior who now stands before the world as the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world, uh, John eleven twenty seven. Every man uh, can now see the truth. They may reject it, but they can see it, amen. Once again, amen, uh, uh, he is the Savior who now stands before the world as the Christ, the Son of God, amen, which should come into the world, uh, John eleven twenty seven. Every man now can see the truth. They may reject it, but they can see it, amen. Could I have a reader for the next group of scriptures? And you can just start uh, whoever goes first. God will raise them up mm -hmm. a prophet from among their brethren like unto them and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. That's Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I have many things to say and to judge of you but he that sent me is true. But I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. John 8, 26. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak, 
John 12, 49. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with thee? Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. John 14, verses 9 through 10. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. John 17 and 8. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So we see here, amen, uh, these scriptures, amen, as I always say, solidify, amen, our Savior and his mission and how, how he came from the Father, amen, and now how the men at that time were able to see, touch, feel the, uh, the Savior, amen, and their words, amen, that went into the Bible, um, their, um, uh, that was written for us, amen, uh, uh, it has led us, amen, to, um, to uh, see the truth as well, amen, because they have uh, written, written down their experiences and their revelation of what Jesus was to them and how he was with them. And then the scriptures, amen, and Deuteronomy, it, it, that was prophecy of um, letting us know, amen, that there will be, amen, um, uh, I will raise them up a prophet from amongst their brethren, amen, that's letting us know that Jesus is going to come through a woman like unto thee and will put, amen, his words, amen, um, in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I should command him. That was a prophecy, and we know that when Jesus came, that prophecy was fulfilled. Amen. And these other scriptures in the New Testament talk about how, amen, Jesus was speaking only um, what his father spoke and what God commanded him to speak. Amen. And it's letting us know, amen, that Jesus Christ was the true son of God, amen, which came into the world. And that allowed, amen, man to see the truth and beheld the truth. Amen. See it, touch, feel, grab, hold the truth. Amen. Um, and yet some still rejected him, which we're going to find out uh, later in the lesson. Amen. But they can see the true Savior. Point two, uh, there is the light of the gospel. Christ has now come, in, come a light into the, to the world uh, that whatsoever, whosoever believeth on him, amen, uh, Christ should not uh, um, abide in darkness any longer. Uh, John 12, 46, once again, I am come. Uh, a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. The truth is that every man can now be delivered from the darkness of sin, despair, and death, and hell. Glory to God. Once again, the truth is that every man can now be delivered from the darkness of sin, despair, death, and hell. John 8 and 12 says, Then Jesus spake, uh, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, amen, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light, glory to God, the light of life, John 8 and 12. In Ephesians 5, 14, I love this one. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light, glory to God. So we see here, amen, there is the light of the gospel. Christ has now come, a light into the world that whosoever believeth on him should not abide in darkness any longer. Point three tonight, there is the light of the spirit, both the guiding and the convincing power of the spirit. John 16, 13 says, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in, into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself once again, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and will show you things to come. John 16, 8 uh, through 11. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and the righteousness of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more of uh, no more of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. 
And lastly, John 3, 19. And this is the command, condemn, condemnation that the light is come uh, into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. John 19, 3, 19. Note that all the light existed in the world is due to Christ, both the light from nature and from heaven, from the physical world and from the spiritual world. Christ is the true light, the life, amen, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen. Uh, we just pause and stop right there for tonight. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, point two next week. Uh, Jesus Christ and his, uh, how he went through rejection. Amen. So at this time, if there's any, uh, any other thoughts before we close, um, I have a couple of questions I'm going to ask uh, before we close, but any other uh, closing thoughts uh, before I ask you our closing questions for tonight? What did you get out of that last part there? Yes, sister. I also was thinking, um, I'm trying to see where I wrote it. That even um, when you was talking about in the natural things, that uh, even the wind and the seas obey him. When we was going over that section, I was thinking about how great he is and the light that he is. That the light obeys him, the darkness obeys him, the wind and the seas obey him. And uh, we serve a mighty God. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And that and. Like I said, it was they they were able to, to see the truth in action because I think it's in the Mark chapter four, you know, where they were on a ship, amen, and um and in the storm, and that's when uh, uh they said, Jesus, do you care? And uh that's when he rebuked the storm, and they were saying, What manner of man is this that even the waves and the sea and the storms obey him? Amen. That showed his deity right there as well. Any other closing points before I uh, ask a couple of questions? If not, um, let me do this real quick. So my first question tonight is this. Um, what does it mean that Jesus is the true light that gives light to everyone? Amen. Uh, what does it mean that Jesus is the true light that gives light to everyone? Any takers? Yes, Deacon Kevin. Um, it means that Jesus Christ was what other men are not. Other mm -hmm. men may claim to be the light of men, but their thoughts are only false imagination. Christ alone was the true light. Christ is to man, Christ is to man what light is to man, and Christ did for what man, what light does for man. Amen. He That's is the it. true true light. He is the true light. Yes, yes. Um, I, I gave a long, uh, educated answer, but that's the, the answer right there, Deacon Kevin. Uh, bring, um, being the true light means that Jesus provides genuine spiritual illumination and truth. Unlike any other source, his light reveals the way to God and eternal life. This light is universal, offering guidance and salvation to all people, transcending culture, social, and geographic boundaries. It signifies that Jesus' teachings and life are the ultimate source of spiritual truth and enlightenment, dispelling the darkness of sin and ignorance. Glory to God. So you're right on point there, Deacon Kevin. Uh, the next question on tonight before we uh, turn over to Pastor for closing remarks, how does the concept of Jesus as the light impact our daily lives and relationship with God? How does the concept of Jesus as the light impact our daily lives in relationships with God. All right, I didn't see any takers. Were you going to say something, Kevin? Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, for me, it keeps me from from falling um, every single day, and and it keeps me from uh, getting upset because I have the Word of God. And, and the word of God gives me hope in the midst of everything. It, it gives me the, the knowledge and the, the spiritual wisdom 
uh, to move forward in, in days in which uh, the world doesn't like you or the world is going crazy and, and things like that. It just gets me through the everyday life of, of, of the hard days of life. And, and at my workplace, when things don't go right, um, you always have Christ to lean on no matter what happens. Um, I had an incident today at, at, um, at the uh, doctor's office where I had to, um, they were doing a test and, and I had to drink a lot of water and I had to hold the water uh, for a long time. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to get through this, <laughs> but I had to call upon Christ uh, to help me through this test. Um, and, and as I was going through, uh, the only name that I knew to call was Christ that helped me to get me through it. Amen. Whenever yes. you, things are going wrong, I know I could call on Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's it, Deacon Kevin. You two for two closing us out tonight. Amen. Uh, understanding Jesus as the light impacts our lives by guiding our actions and decisions. Each teaching provides moral compass and clarity. In a world often filled with confusion and moral uh, shortcomings, by following his light, we align ourselves with God's will, experience deeper spiritual insight, and foster a closer relationship with God. This light brings hope. It brings comfort. It brings a sense of purpose, encouraging us to live uh, um, to live uh, lives, amen, that reflect his love and truth to others. Amen. So I thank God uh, for the class one tonight. Uh, verse 9, the one of uh, John 1 and 9, the one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Christ was that light that came into the world. Amen. Uh, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to open the floor up to pastor uh, for any closing remarks at this time. Well, we just thank God for the class on this evening, for Pastor Kenny, the teacher, and for each one that's in the class and those that will be listening later. Uh, I just thank God for Jesus being the light of the world. I was thinking about the fact that every time a person is born again and they accept Jesus as their personal Savior and they accept his finished work, they are now being introduced to the one that knew them from the beginning of creation. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they're being introduced back to Father God, yeah. which knew their substance before they were even born. And yeah. it's it's just exciting, you know, just to just the word of God. And for some reason, I don't know why I, this thought came to me when uh Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet has that not known me, Philip. But I was thinking about that in light of relationships and people knowing one another. Mm -hmm. And sometimes maybe the person you know might have been accused of something. And you and you can say, no, I've been with that person too long. I know them too long. That I know that was not them. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? Yeah. But, but he was concerned because he was asking, you know, uh, about the father who, you know, and mm -hmm. but Jesus was trying to make them known, make it known to them that when you saw me, you see the Father because we were one. Yeah. But I was just I don't know why that thought came to me, but sometimes you can be with a person so long that you know them and you know their character. So when they are accused of certain things, mm -hmm. you can almost vouch for them. You know. Yes. That thought just came to me as far yes. as that part was concerned. But mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful lesson and. I thank God for the fact that uh, light expels darkness and people don't like the light because that deeds are evil. <laughs> yes, so yes. We just thank God that we don't have to worry about trying to be covered up, covering up. <laughs> oh. We don't want to cover up nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't want to cover up anything. No. Mm -mm. And just be open and free before the Lord. Yes. I turn it back over to you. I just thank God yes. for the lesson. Thank you, Pastor. And I love that that part there. Um, that is so true that, you know, 
Uh, when we know someone to the point where we can vouch for them, amen, where we know their character, we know them, amen, and, and if something is said about them, amen, that's out of character, because you know them, as Pastor was saying, um, you can vouch that, no, that's, they wouldn't, that's okay. maybe not him, amen. and I love that, because that's um, just how we're supposed to um, be with our Savior, amen, that we know him, Amen. Because we read in his word, we study in his word, we're praying, we're fasting. Amen. We getting in his word, we're growing spiritually. Amen. And we getting connected where we know our Father God. Um, uh, just as Jesus asked his disciples, look, I've been with you so long, but you don't even know me. Amen. But it, when you see me, you should see the Father. And that's the same way it should be with us. Amen. When people are around us, that we should be illuminating the presence of Jesus Christ out of our lives. Amen. That it should be given off a different character than what it may like our human body or human look may be given off. Amen. Because the light is within us and it should be exposing us to the truth and those that are around us. So it should be a whole different um, look than um, what the world has. And it's sad to say that a lot of um, not just in church, but um, people claim to go to church. Amen. Say that they have Christ in them. Amen. But they don't talk, act, um, or resemble, amen, Christ at all. Amen. So that's, I believe, is causing a, a great hindrance to the growth of, of what God wants to do in Europe today because we're resembling the world and not resembling our Savior. Amen. So we just thank God for passing those closing remarks. I thank God for all the remarks on tonight. Um, if you're watching this program, as we close on tonight, and you have never um, accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, uh, before we close, we always give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Uh, John 10 and 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you can repeat these words after me, the Bible tells us that you will be saved, and that light that we have been talking about on tonight will come and abide with you. Amen. It will expose and it will make new Amen. It will renew. Amen. It would uh, uh, regenerate. Amen. New life within you. Amen. And pastor said something that I always uh, thought about in her uh, closing remarks there is that I always said that, that God made a way for us to be reconnected to him. Amen. By sending his son, Jesus Christ. And that connection, when you receive his son, Jesus Christ, that connection is made. And now you are, are making a connection back. To Father God, as Pastor stated earlier, amen, to the one that knew you before you even was a thought in your mother and father's eye. Before you even got to this earth, he knew you and he made a way and he made um, uh, plans for us. Amen. And now you're reconnected to your Father God through Jesus Christ. If you're a backslider as well, you can repeat these words after me. And the Bible tells us, amen, that God loves the sinner and he loves, amen, the backslider as well. And you will be welcomed back into the kingdom of God. You can repeat these words after me. And the Bible says once again that you will be saved. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him back to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as my Lord. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you just quoted that for us, uh, quoted that after me, the angels in heaven is rejoicing over your um, new uh, walk with the Lord. And the church here as well is um, celebrating with you. You can reach out to us through, through the chat or us or go to rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org. Go to our email page and let us know excuse me, that you just got saved and um, you would like to know more information about this new walk with the Lord. Amen. Our um, church announcements are as follows. Every Thursday, amen, at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. is Time of Restoration Radio Broadcast. That's found on WTMRradio.com, 800 a.m. radio, also on rcfchurch.org, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube Music. Uh, Pastor is doing an awesome teaching on sanctification. Uh, this uh, lesson tomorrow will be point five. Uh, if you haven't been tuning in, I've been blessed. Each of the lessons um, that have, uh, we have covered so far, that she's instructing us, or amen, how God wants us to be holy and how he has made a way for us to be sanctified. Amen. And we want to walk in that sanctification that he has provided for us. So please tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m., 8 p.m., um, WTMRradio.com and 800 a.m. radio at 10 a.m., it's on our church webpage, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube Music, uh, Sanctification Part 5. 
Also, uh, this Friday, uh, for those that are in the survey of the Bible class, that's at 7 p.m. this Friday. Amen. Survey of the Bible class at 7 p.m. this Friday. Also, amen, we got to get excited about this. It's coming up uh, December 13th, 2024. It's our evangelistic service. Amen. Uh, December 13th, 2024. Pass the word, 7 p.m. Um, we have a, uh, we're going to worship the Lord, hear the word of God, believe God for some miracles, believe God for some people to get saved. And we believe um, the word will be given to uh, the speaker of the night. The speaker of the night on that night will be Minister Stratford Stewart. Minister Stratford Stewart will be bringing the word that night. Uh, we look forward to another awesome night, December 13th, 2024, 7 p.m. Evangelistic service. Amen. Pass the word. Amen. We're looking for a dynamite time in the Lord um, on December 13th at 7 p.m. Amen. Um, if you would like to be a blessing to restoration, the Bible tells us in uh, Proverbs 11, 25, a, the generous, amen, will prosper. Those who refresh others, glory to God, will themselves be refreshed. Amen. The generous, amen, will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. If you would like to be a blessing to restoration, amen, you can do that through our cash app, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ. You also can go to our church webpage, rcfchurch.org, rcfchurch.org, click on the giving tab, and you can give those ways as well. Uh, if you would like to know more information about our beautiful church, uh, you can uh, visit us, rcfchurch.org. Um, also, we're found on YouTube and Facebook. YouTube is RCF Church SJ, RCF Church SJ, and Facebook is RCF uh, C SJ, RCF C SJ is Facebook. All of our previous Bible studies, Sunday morning services, and uh, messages are posted on both of those YouTube and Facebook pages. If you would like to visit us in person, uh, if you're in the um, area of New Jersey, uh, our address is 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey. 08081 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey 08081. I put the picture of the church up there so you'll see it. So when you get close to the area, you look over there, you say, Oh, that's the picture from the church. That's where I'm going today. Amen. So we look forward to seeing you um, in person at our beautiful sanctuary at Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. Amen. Glory to God. At this time, I'm going to place in the hands of our sister uh, Ricky. That's going to close us out uh, in our prayer on closing prayer on tonight. Thank you. Um, I did want to make one other note. Uh, I had it written down that we didn't mention last week um, about Christ, that he said, if he be lifted up from the earth, he will draw all men unto him. And we yeah. thank God that his light will draw all men. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I just thank you, Father, that you have forgiven me, Father God, of anything that I have said or done, Lord God, that was not in your will, Lord God. Oh God, I just thank you for everything, for who you are, Lord God. You are our chief cornerstone, Lord God, our good shepherd, Lord God. Oh Lord, you are the light of the world, Lord God. Oh God, we just thank you that your light penetrates, God, that your light is clear and pure, that it enlightens, it reveals, it guides, it exposes and trips, strips away, Lord God. Oh God, I thank you that your light discriminates between what's right and what's wrong, and it warns of, our, of danger, Lord God. Your light protects us, Lord God, to keep us from tripping and stumbling and falling and injuring ourselves, Lord God. And losing our life, Lord God. In John 12, 35, God, you told us that we should walk while we have the light, lest darkness come upon us, Lord God. And when we walk in darkness, Lord God, we don't know where we're going, Lord God. But your light, Lord God, is... Um, a lamp to our feet, Lord God, and a light to our path, Father God. So we just thank you, Lord, for your light, Jesus, the light of the world, that marvelous light, Lord God. Oh God, that people could deny that light all they want, Lord God, but your creation has shown and proven 
who you are, God, that you are our creator, Lord God. Yeah. There's none like you, Lord God. There's none mightier than you, Lord God. There's nobody bigger, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you expel the darkness, Lord God. You are the light, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. Oh God, your word said that you wish that none would perish, Lord God. And we must work the works of him that sent you, Lord God, while it is yet day, because nighttime come when no man can work, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for this Bible study, Lord. Oh God, I ask you to bless our pastor, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, from the crown of her head, to the soles of her feet, Lord God, and yes, everything yes. in between, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God. Everything that she puts out, Lord God, we ask you to give it back to her, Lord God, a hundredfold, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen her in every way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I also thank you for Elder Kenny, Lord God, as he is faithful, Lord God, to teach and, and do everything that he does for restoration following your word, Lord God, following your light, that path that you have laid out before him, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you know anything that he is in need of, Lord God, before we could even think or ask, Lord God, but it is for us to be strengthened, Lord God, that we come to you in prayer and ask those things, Lord God. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I just ask you to meet every need, Father God, for each and every one that's on the class today, everyone that's in our um, our body, in our in our edifice, Father God, at our church, Lord God, the daycare, Lord God, the parents that come on the property, your relatives, Lord God, meet every need, Lord God, yes, even yes. in our communities, in our homes, Lord God, in our state, Lord God, in this country, Lord God, in the world, Lord God, we lift those up to you that are sick and shut in, Lord God, those that have different ailments in their bodies, those that are on our prayer list, Lord God. We ask you that the lost would be found, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that the sick would be healed and recover from all of their diseases, Lord yeah. God. Oh God, and that blinded eyes would be opened, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that they would come unto you, Lord God, that they would come into that marvelous, glorious light, Lord God, that that light of life, Lord God, would surround them, Lord God, as they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, so that they can meet personally their creator, Lord God, that they could have a personal relationship with you, Lord God, in the name of Amen. Jesus, God. I just thank you. If there's anything that I miss, Lord God, I, I, you know what the need is, Lord God, but I give it all to you, Father. And we just ask you once again to um, bless this word. Let us hide your word in our hearts, Lord God, that we may not sin against you, Lord God, and that we would do as you commanded is to tell someone about Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you all the honor, all the glory in your mighty, precious name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for everything that you've done and everything you're going to do in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Uh, once again, I thank everyone for joining um, and all the input on tonight. Um, I feel led to close with this scripture, a very familiar one. I keep saying that. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Please have a beautiful night and get some rest. And we look forward to seeing you uh, either Sunday or next Wednesday or Friday. Amen. God bless. Take care. God bless.